All right, I want to make a follow-up video here to show the scenes that were cut out of the last video. It was a technical problem here. I don't know whether my camera or the computer didn't render it properly. I'm not sure. But uh, I want to start out here quickly in Matthew chapter 24 to show the verse. Um, 24 verse 5, Jesus speaking here, he says to his disciples, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. People are going to come and say, you know, not only in Jesus' name saying that they are Christians, but they will even go so far as to say that they are Christ. I am Christ. And it says, they shall deceive many. Okay? Take heed that no man deceive you. Now, that's very important. And I want to show here the New St. Joseph Baltimore Catechism. Let me zoom in here. Back on page 259, zoom in a little bit more, and you see it says, The ordained priest takes the place of Christ. Okay, they shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. And again, on page 213, Christ our high priest in heaven, the priest on earth, another Christ. Okay, watch the other video and you'll see that this is in line with the other two catechisms, the 2001 and then the older one that I show in the other video. It's kind of sad, really, that they would believe this way. And here we have, again, what we see, what we should think of. So you have the priest there and you should actually be seeing that he is Christ. Which is kind of weird because with the whole transubstantiation thing and the Eucharist and all this and the communion host, uh, according to Catholic doctrine, Christ is actually here in the bread and the, and the wine, the cup there. He's here, but he's also here. Uh, yeah, doesn't make much sense. But let me show you another one here. New St. Joseph First Communion Catechism. This is one for children, and here on page 53, the Mass is Christ, Christ's act of love. So again, you see, you don't even see a picture of a priest there. You see a picture of, you know, a depiction of Christ, of Jesus Christ, and he is the priest. Now, a lot of these kids... You know, not in this drawing, obviously, but there are children, many, many thousands of children that have been molested by their priest. And, you know, if you're a Catholic, you, you have to admit to that. I mean, yeah, it's, it's been in the news. Now, a Catholic child, they're taught that their priest is Christ. So in their little minds, if they're a devout Catholic, they're thinking Christ molested them. You see? Pretty evil. And here you have, I'll just show you another one real quick. The priest takes Christ's place. Now let me just show you why I have a problem with that. We're going to go to the book of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. Let me zoom in here so you can read it. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men... The man, Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is the one mediator between God and man, not a Catholic priest. All right, and, and the reason I'm doing these videos, by the way, I'm not trying to attack Catholics and hate Catholics as people. It's the system. It's, it's the religious system of Catholicism that I'm opposed to. And there's all this talk about the ecumenical movement and, you know, we need to respect other faiths and there are many paths to God. But when you actually study Roman Catholicism, you'll see that their beliefs do not teach that. Here you have this picture. Heaven. Mary helping people up the ladder to heaven. And it says, How does Jesus help all men to gain heaven? Jesus helps all men to gain heaven through the Catholic Church. The Church is like a ladder to heaven. Jesus gave us only one ladder. The church is our only way to heaven. 
how does the Catholic Church help us to gain heaven? The Catholic Church helps us to gain heaven, especially through the sacraments. And there you have your different sacraments, the ladder there, the magic ladder that goes to heaven. The church is our ladder to heaven, and it goes on and on. Let's look at some more things from the Baltimore Catechism. Here you have a Catholic sins against faith by taking part in non-Catholic worship when he intends to identify himself with a religion he knows is defective. Now, I'm not a Catholic. I'm a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. And according to this, my religion is defective. My relationship with Jesus Christ is defective because I'm not a Catholic. Here you have uh, a Catholic sins against faith by all those things there and also taking part in non-Catholic worship. A uh, Catholic can best safeguard his faith by refusing to associate with the enemies of the church and by not reading books, kind of like the King James Bible, which the Catholic Church has never endorsed, and papers opposed to the church and her teaching. Are all obliged to belong to the Catholic Church in order to be saved? All are obliged to belong to the Catholic Church in order to be saved. When we say outside the church there is no salvation, we mean that Christ made the Catholic Church a necessary means of salvation and commanded all to enter it so that a person must be connected with the church in some way to be saved. No one can be saved except by being united to the Catholic Church. Interesting. Where's the word Catholic at in the Bible? It's not there. That's not, Jesus Christ did not found the Catholic Church. That's nonsense. Here you have the church. Which is the one true church established by Christ? The one true church established by Christ is the Catholic Church. Again, where's it at in the Bible? Where's the word sacrament in the Bible? Where's the word nun? Where's the word monk? Where's the word pope? <laughs> you know? Now I just want to show you one other thing here. I'm going to do more of a review on this at some other time. Just to, again, another witness against this whole ecumenical thing. The church teaches documents of the church in English translation by Jesuit fathers of St. Mary's College. And uh, I want to show you a verse, one of the most important two verses in the entire New Testament. Speaking of salvation, what you must do to be saved. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Now if you're a Bible believer, you know these verses probably by heart. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of, uh, not of sacraments, not of belonging to the Catholic Church, or the Baptist Church, or the Presbyterian Church, or the Lutheran, or the Methodist, or whatever. Being part of a denomination doesn't make, doesn't make you saved, okay? Uh, the Catholic Church is not a necessary means of salvation. It's not of works. It's through faith, by faith in Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's by faith. Okay? But let me show you here on this, in this, uh, the church teaches, official documents written by the Jesuits. Here you have page 263. Let me back it out here a little bit so you can read the whole thing. If anyone says that the sacraments of the new law are not necessary for salvation, but that they are superfluous, and that men can without the sacraments or the desire of them obtain the grace of justification by faith alone, although it is, a true, although it is true that not all the sacraments are necessary for each individual, let him be anathema. Damned to hell is what that means. This book... I don't know the exact number, I haven't counted it yet, but this book has probably a couple of hundred curses in it. Let him be anathema. If you believe this, let him be anathema, anathema, anathema. Damning people to hell that are not part of the Catholic Church. So don't fall for all this ecumenical, oh, there are many paths to God and whatever. No, the Catholic Church is the most narrow-minded church out there. Faith in Jesus Christ alone. His finished work on the cross is what will get you saved. 